I used to love IT lessons at primary school. Mainly because they weren't actually IT lessons so much as an opportunity to muck around on the school computers. But one of the overriding memories of primary school computer frippery was playing Granny's Garden, an edutainment game which everyone absolutely loved. We usually played it on our own, but occasionally we'd all crowd around one computer and try to work out the puzzles if there weren't enough computers to go around. To my knowledge, nobody ever finished the game at the time. So today, I aim to rectify that lost experience and present to you the true ending of Granny's Garden. Here's my copy, and yes, this is an official copy of the game for Windows. Not that you could tell from the print quality. It has inside a single CD-ROM. No manual, no nothing. Not even a big box. The game opens in the Garden of Granny, as you'd imagine. It's a very sparse garden, surrounded by a concrete wall, outside of which sits a perspective-defying tree. Tell you what, Granny needs some WD-40 or something, that chair's creaking like a good one. Anyway, no sooner have you set foot in the garden than you promptly leave it. The garden comprises but a single screen of this entire game. Imagine if every game was named after its first area. Sonic the Hedgehog would be called Green Hill, Ghouls and Ghosts would be called Haunted Graveyard. Actually, these titles aren't bad. Okay, couples love land instead of Metal Slug 3. Nope, still works too well. You get the point. After playing for a brief moment, it's clear that Granny's Garden is ostensibly an illustrated text adventure. Everything you do is tapped out in one word answers to questions and statements given by the game. If your goal is to introduce children to the wonderful world of text adventures, I suppose there are worse ways of doing it. It turns out that the King and Queen of the Mountains have been imprisoned and your task is to rescue their six children. Bit of a tall order for a 4 to 10 year old child, but never fear, the Blue Raven is here to help. The Blue Raven and his excellent voice acting. Okay, time to nip off to the woodcutter's house. This is home to our first puzzle. Time to get those thinking caps on, massage the old grey matter, shore up then synapses, bolster those electrical circuits, and see if you can work this one out. I'll give you a moment. Answers on a postcard. The puzzles in this game are understandably quite simple in nature. It's mostly a memory and comprehension test, with each of the four scenarios presenting their own self-contained puzzle. To get past the house, you're expected to explore each room and find clues that will eventually lead you to the cupboard and the green broom. However, there's a lot of trial and error involved. A lot. Any misstep you take in this game is an instant death sentence from the witch. She's kind of scary, look at those eyes. She looks a little wired. And a lot of the death traps in Granny's garden aren't clearly telegraphed. Sure, jumping into a boiling pot isn't going to win you many awards, but taking a red broom? An audacious move that clearly does not pay off. The second level's puzzle makes a lot more sense, as it's all about logic and practical thinking. Hello, hello, hello. I'm the talking turtle. You're given a scenario and have to decide which of the five giant creatures is best suited to help you get past it. I don't mind this one, it's the best puzzle in the game by far. But can we talk about these totally inconsistent graphics? It looks like they pulled all these elements from about 15 different clip art libraries. Honestly, none of these creatures look like they belong together whatsoever. It's a bit embarrassing and reminds me of those rudimentary point and click adventures we used to make in PowerPoint. Level 3 takes place in the City of Dragons, which, as the name suggests, is a rural parish populated by Kelpies. At the gate, we're greeted by a <coughs> highly stereotypical gentleman. His name is a bit on the nose. What's my favourite food? On this channel, there's only one right answer to that question. Marmalade, I like marmalade. Now, this was the one everyone got stuck on at school, and that's because it's yet another trial and error puzzle. You literally have no way of knowing how to progress without being caught by the witch several times. Essentially, it's a case of working out what the favourite food is of each of these dragons, then using that knowledge to draw them out one by one, as trying to bare knuckle fight more than one dragon at once is a big ask for a four year old. Run out of a type of food, even if you don't need it anymore, and it's back to the garden with no supper. <laughs> There's something a bit creepy about how submissive these dragons are too. Magic collars are no joke it seems. 
but I'm sure there was a better way of doing this without drawing parallels to slavery. By the way, the solution is thus. Buns, lollies, oranges, chips. Easy. Now we have a subservient squad of baby dragons, and we've also rescued another child. What a great day this is turning out to be. Two more children to find. The final puzzle is based on navigation, but it's ridiculously obtuse. You can only travel in certain directions, but every path looks the same until you try and take it. And get this, it's impossible to finish this puzzle without getting caught, at least the first time. There's a creature whose name you have to remember to get a certain item, but you don't learn the creature's name until it's too late for you to go back. Nice one, game. Oh, and one other thing. You find the witch in a house, and to complete the level you have to steal a piece of cake out of her hand. Even though, based on what we've learnt so far, that shouldn't be a good idea. So, what have we learnt from Granny's Garden? Well, we've learnt that it's okay to go in someone's house and root through all the stuff. We've learnt that bees will give their lives for a cause, even if it's not worth it. We've learnt that the only way to get around a dragon is to mind control them into submission. And we've learnt that forest fires can be put out with just a handful of water. I'm gonna say it. Granny's Garden is a bad game. It was acceptable in 1983, when scores were furnished with BBC Micros. This version first came out in 1993 for the Acorn Archimedes, with this Windows version following in 99, and it's absolutely identical in every way, except the graphics. Which I'd say are actually worse. It's ugly, it's inconsistent, and the animations range from rubbish to nonsensical. The audio simply does a job. And this is a world where we have jump ahead, zoom beanies, even freaking Adibu. We have edutainment games that make full use of the technology, with cartoon quality animations, CD audio and proper voice acting. And mouse control of all things. Granny's Garden is a relic, and not the good kind either. In fact, with the same source material, I could genuinely do a better job myself. Anyone could. And that's to say nothing of the game's ending, which is so abrupt you might not even realise it happens. You rescue the last two children. One is in a castle that isn't as bizarre as it says it is, and the other's in a burning building, because that's safe to just walk into. And then it just ends, with no real conclusion. It's just the end of the adventure. You go back to the garden, and Granny makes you a nice cup of tea. But what's this? I've seen this cake somewhere before. Oh. And after all that, the king and queen apparently still remain imprisoned. Well, someone else's problem now.